Ruthann McKinnon here again. I'm going to be covering two perfumes in this video. It's going to be something a little unique, a little different. I've seen a couple of videos like this on uh, YouTube. I'm going to be reviewing two very different fragrances and I'm going to tell a bit of what I would call a scent story and a little walk down uh, memory lane. So uh, let me know if you enjoy this this video. Um, so I'm just going to get started. Um, I'm going to start with this first fragrance, and this is Vanderbilt. And uh, it was made, I'm not sure if it was made by the House of Gloria Vanderbilt, or if it was made in memory of them, or memory of her. Uh, this was a big fragrance, popular in the 80s. I went to high school, I was a teenager in the 80s, and this was one of my signature scents. So about the age of 17, I got a job in a candle shop in a mall in the city that I grew up in. And what I remember the most about this fragrance is I wore this every day that I went to work there. And um, I really didn't have a lot of money. I was making minimum wage, which at that time was a little over $4 an hour. And I could only afford drugstore type perfumes. And this is what I remember buying. I had been wearing very basic things like musks and Love's Baby Soft. And this was my first venture into what I would consider a more adult fragrance. Gloria Vanderbilt is a yellow floral. It's a warm, spicy, sweet, woody fragrance. Um, it has a note of cinnamon in the mid notes and it's extremely well blended in so that you can't even really pick out the cinnamon because cinnamon has got to be one of my least favorite notes. It's in there, but you, like I said, it's so well blended you can't really pick it out. This came out in 1982, and it was made by Sophia Grosman, who um, I didn't know at the time, but I grew to know later in my adulthood is my favorite perfumer. What is really unique, in my opinion, about this fragrance is that it has a top note of pineapple. And not really understanding at the time when I was wearing it, when I was a teenager, what was so unique about this perfume, I now understand for myself, was that note of pineapple. Uh, Sophia Grosman tends to add a lot of peach in her fragrances, and it's this mixture of fruity and floral that is kind of her signature, but in Gloria Vanderbilt, it's the pineapple note that's mixed with the cinnamon and the um, yellow florals that make it really very unique and very beautiful. In my opinion, this is a real feminine classic, and it's a masterpiece. It's nice and strong, it projects, and um, what is beautiful, or what I, what I find amazing, is when I bought this, just a few weeks ago. It smells exactly the same. It has not been gutted and reformulated. It's exactly the same as what I remember wearing it um, back in the 80s. Um, it's just an enchanting fragrance. It's comfort in a bottle. It's luxurious. It has a, a really good sillage, lasts six to eight hours, and it's a great value. I, I think for this 100 ml bottle, I paid about $20. Um, so <clears throat> this is what the box looks like, just to give you an idea. I don't know, some people like to look at boxes. The bottle is a little different from what I remember. It used to be a bit more ornate. It has this swan, uh, which is um, indented on the bottle, and the back of the bottle is not decorated. And what I remember is I would usually get the smaller 50 ml bottles and then I would go through them really quickly. And I must have gone through a good 10, 20 of these bottles in my uh, lifetime. The um, cap is a metal um, with Gloria Vanderbilt uh, on the top. And like I said, I wore this every day in the candle shop that I worked at. And one of my co-workers, she was an uh, older woman and her name was Veronica. Not her real name, but close to her real name. Anyway, she was a, a retired woman in her 60s. She was 60s or 70s. I'm not even really sure. She was a widow, 
and a very wealthy widow. She wore the most beautiful clothing, and she always walked around in this cloud of perfume. And she and I would talk about our perfumes, and she would come in to work when we worked together, and she'd say, Eric, you know, she'd say, you know, what are you wearing? And I would tell her, I'm wearing Gloria Vanderbilt. And she would always say, well, I'm wearing Jiki. And Jiki was the only thing she ever wore. It was her signature scent. She swore by it. And at the time, of course, Jiki was a very fancy schmancy Guerlain fragrance that I would never have been able to avoid. Or afford, I'm sorry. And I remember how luxurious and beautiful and rich it smelled on her. Now, she always wore these very expensive designer clothes. She had one of those hairdos that she would go into the salon once a week and have it done, and then she'd sleep on it for a week and go back in a week later and have it redone. So her hair was like a helmet. It was it was a hairdo, let me tell you. She always had very expensive Chanel makeup, and she had these expensive... Chanel lipsticks, and her nails were always professionally done, and she was so, such a classy lady. She lived in a high-rise apartment in a very wealthy part of town, and yet she, just to have something to do, she came to work here in this candle shop, and that's how I met her. And even though we were from extremely different walks of life, different ages, completely different people, um, we got along famously, and I loved Veronica. She and I got along great. And what I remember about Jiki, of course, besides her, is she, to me, this smells like a cashmere sweater because that's the kind of stuff that she wore. Cashmere sweaters with very expensive, very um, wealthy-looking woolen skirts with designer shoes, and she always had a matching designer handbag. And even though I've really painted a picture of class for her, she was also a real kind of a loud, gregarious, um, she could swear like a sailor when she wanted to, when she wasn't around customers, and she could be crass, and just a really colorful personality. And I remember she would kind of shock me. I was this private school um, girl that really didn't know much about the world, and here she's this worldly uh, lady, but then again, she didn't drive, and so part of the way I got to know her is that I would often drive her home from work, and so then uh, I would be smelling this jiki in my car, and I think she bathed in this stuff. She probably had matching soaps and lotions, I don't know, but anyway... She was also a heavy smoker. And so when I smell Jiki, now that I've purchased a bottle of it for myself, when I spray this, even though there's no smokiness, there's no notes of tobacco in the fragrance, to me it smells like cigarette smoke because Veronica was a heavy smoker. And so Jiki, to me, blended and was indistinguishable from this really strong smell of cigarette smoke. And um, she and I just got along famously, and I, I loved her. And um, I don't know whatever became of her. We worked together for two years. And kind of like two fragrances from two different, completely different times, two different classes, completely different ages, and they're actually kind of go together well, in my opinion. Now, Jiki is an oriental fougere that was first started, or first came about in 1889. Top notes include rosemary, bergamot, citrus, and in the mid, it has notes of tonka, iris, basil, and in the base, it's a real vanilla, jasmine, amber civet. That civet, it does provide a little bit of funkiness, a little bit of depth and some animalic notes, but it's not orally animalic in my opinion. And it will last more than six hours. It's got a real bombastic sillage. Uh, I've heard other people describe it as mild. I don't think. I think it's more of a, like, you can smell it across the room. 
if you put enough of it on. It's a slightly dirty, spicy, aromatic, but yet it's pure class in a bottle. It's, it's a graceful perfume. It's very chic, classy. And like I said, when I smell it, it smells like designer handbags, <laughs> designer shoes, and it has a real depth and complexity that I think is gorgeous. And I just wanted to kind of walk down memory lane with these two fragrances. Um, and, you know, in honor of Veronica, whom I miss and I really enjoyed and learned a lot from her. So um, anyway, that's my scent memory, my scent story. Uh, thank you for listening, and I'll see you on the next one.